Welcome to The Younger You, everyone. Well, today we're talking about several procedures. One, a total eye rejuvenation that can either be done with an upper or lower eye bleph, plus a mini liquid facelift. Let me introduce you, everyone, to board certified plastic surgeon, Dr. Jared Nims. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. So let's start off with our first procedure, an upper and lower eye bleph. What is the correct terminology? Am I using it correctly? Yeah. To do someone's eyelids, you want to do the uppers if they have excess skin, if they look like they're tired. The lower eyelids, again, excess skin, also some puffiness that you can see there. So we corrected both of those things for her. Okay. Do you need to have them both done. Now we're talking about a total eye rejuvenation, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So that's where we are really looking at upper and lower. Right. Is it a procedure that you could just maybe do the lower and then come back in a few weeks and go, yeah, now I need the top done? Of course, you can do it however you want to do it and whatever works for the patient. An upper eyelid blepharoplasty is commonly done actually in my office. Oh, so really? some people choose to just do that procedure alone. That decreases some of the costs associated with the operating room and the anesthesia, and then yeah. have the lower blepharoplasty done at a, at a later time. How long does the procedure take? The upper blepharoplasty takes about an hour to do. The lower takes maybe an hour and a half to two hours. I have been told by people out there, especially over the years of doing this show, that if you take too much skin from the lower part of your eye, you could actually create a little bit of droopiness where your tear duct continually um, drips your tear or liquid. Right. Is that true? You can. And so a large part of the lower blepharoplasty is actually not just taking out that skin, but it's resuspending everything to help it look a little bit higher and a little tighter. With saying that, this is the most important thing. Do you go to a, a plastic surgeon that specializes in that? Or is this something that you know, most plastic surgeons do? Well, it depends on how much of any procedure that they do. For yeah. blepharoplasty, um, that's something that, that is commonly done by many plastic surgeons. So many plastic surgeons would, would be okay. okay to do that. All right, downtime. For the uppers, um, there is minimal pain associated really? with that. However, you do have uh, continued swelling that can last for up to a month because uh, swelling goes down with gravity. And for yeah. an upper eyelid, Gravity is going to take it either to the right or left, not not down. Okay. For the lower eyelid, it's actually less pain um, and less downtime. Okay. So let's jump to our next patient that we were looking at, and we're talking about the liquid mini facelift. Yes. I love this because this is for people who don't want to go under the knife. Right. So let's talk about Kybella. Right. Now this has been out for what, maybe a year or two now? Something like that. So we're seeing some great results. Mm -hmm. This is done on the chin area. Talk us through that. For someone who doesn't want surgery, but they have a little bit of ex excess fat right underneath the chin, it works very well. It's a series of injections. Each time you come in, there are, say, 30 to 40 different injections, so you're putting small little amounts of the, of the fluid into each one of those pockets in order to get a fluid surface so that everything looks nice and flat when you're done. Okay, obviously how many times do you need to come back and have this Depends done? on the person. So some people, if they have more fat, may need it done four or five times. Other people may only need it done twice. Is this in replace of liposuction? They work similarly in that they are taking away the fat underneath the chin in one way or the other. However, uh, with liposuction, um, everything is done all at once. It's a one-time deal and then you're done. With Kybella, um, it's less downtime perhaps mm. each time, but you have to come and get it done multiple okay. times. Okay, all right. Now let's move up to the next part of the face that we're yeah. doing. Now you were in doing injectables. That's what we call a liquid facelift, correct? correct? Yep. What type of injectables would someone expect to have in their face? A common thing that we use is, is a hyaluronic acid filler. Those uh -huh. are things like Juvederm or Restylane. In her, we use Restylane, and there are different forms of Restylane that you can use. Um, you can inject one that lasts a little bit longer up by the cheeks, and there are ones that last not as long, and those go usually around the mouth or in the eyelids or that sort of thing. And we have talked before um, when it comes to maybe doing liposuction and transferring that fat. Would that be considered 
um, part of a liquid facelift or is it truly an injectable? Well, a fat grafting is a surgical procedure. Yeah. So it just depends on what the patient is wanting and okay. how much downtime they want and whether or not they want fat taken from another place. Okay. A benefit of doing the fat grafting is that we're actually removing fat from another place. Okay, what do people expect with downtime? Because I assume that you would do Kybella and then on the same day do the injectables? Depends or on the person, but uh, with her we did Kybella on, on one occasion and then came back and had a little bit more Kybella and, okay. and the filler place at the same time. All right, well I can't wait to see the procedures. Alrighty everyone, after the break we get to meet Lynn who had the total eye rejuvenation and we'll see how it's all performed. For more information on The Younger You or to re-watch this episode and others, head over to theyoungeryou.tv. Alrighty everyone, now let's check in with Lynn and Dr. Nims as he gets underway with the operation. I'm having upper and lower eyes. The last few years I have noticed some more kind of puffiness that doesn't go away with cucumbers. I felt like this might be the time to do it. I felt that it was something that really uh, weighed on my mind a lot every time I look at the mirror. I see somebody that just looks tired even on, their even on my good days and people will ask, oh, you know, do you have a, a long night? Or, you know, I used to work night shifts all the time, so I had that to fall back on. And, but now I don't work night shifts, and I still look tired. Plastic surgery is an interesting combination of doing something very physical, but it, it has dramatic implications for somebody's inner sense of self. We all, I think, look at people and say that, they go, oh, you're just fine. I think it's just something personal that uh, you know sometimes you can do things that are going to freshen up your outlook. Now at 49 I am seeing the uh, effects of not taking care of my skin since uh, an early age. My skin routine over the years was probably hand soap and washing my face when I was you know probably in my 20s and 30s and some foundation so I didn't really have a really good uh, skin care regime. I think uh, by not really paying attention at a younger age for with my skin care that I am dealing more with you know spots and blotchiness and uh, things that probably could have been prevented. Everyone has different skin quality. Some people as as we age we may develop much more laxity in the skin. Other people retain that that uh, elasticity. You have to address whichever components are are there or are missing. You know, after doing research uh, and looking into different doctors, uh, Dr. Nims was really the one that I felt was the best for me. I was very comfortable with him. He was very, uh, you know, very professional. To get my mind past any fears of the procedures, uh, you know, I think of uh, people that I've known that go in and have things, simple things done, and you just have to, to go on with life every time you walk out your door. There could be something going on and can't let that stop you. I've been telling friends about this and I've talked to them and I'm like, you know, it's great. And if they have an opinion, they can keep it themselves. I think uh, other women having surgery is great. Like, um, I always feel it's an individual choice and whether it's exercising, diet, uh, sometimes you need a little extra help for getting that, you know, feeling that you want. and putting the best foot forward. After my surgery, I don't want to see an obvious surgical look. I, I want to, you know, just like I say, have, uh, feel like nobody could put their finger on it, but something just looks you know, a little fresher. I hope it will be a younger me. <laughs> I'm hope, I mean, I really think it's going to take like 10 years off. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. Basic anatomy of somebody's eyelid, um, both the uppers and the lowers, is that uh, you have some skin and then you have a little bit of fat and then you have a little bit of muscle underneath that. And then depending on which eyelid you're looking at, the upper or the lower, there are other things underneath that. For the lower eyelid, that muscle comes down and attaches onto the cheekbone. Over time, 
that attachment there tends to take on a, a fullness as the fat and the, the cushioning around the eye tends to herniate out onto the lower eyelid. And so in order to restore that, you are releasing some of that fat. You are trying to resuspend some of that retaining wall so that it looks more gradual. It doesn't look so carved out. For the upper eyelids, that involves just removing a little bit of excess skin. For the lower eyelids, where she had a little bit of an attachment from, uh, of the lower eyelid down onto the underlying um, orbital bone, we had to release that and give her and restore a little bit of fullness to that uh, lower eyelid to make it not look so baggy. We, we took off a little bit of that skin and then for the lower eyelids, we took off some skin in addition to moving some of that fat around to take out that sunken appearance and, um, and smooth out those, those bags that may have been accumulating with time. You can either put that incision on the inside of the eyelid on the portion of the eyelid that hits up against your eyeball, or you can put it on the outside by the skin. Some people like to put it on the inside because there's no incision on the skin that you can see, and that works for, that works for many people. Unfortunately, if you want to take out loose skin, the only way you can do that is with an incision on the skin so that you can take it out. And so that's, that's essentially what we did for her. We, we unattached that muscle and we allowed some of that fat to droop down overlying into her cheek to give it a more uh, gradual descent and, and a, a softer look. Coming up after the break, everyone, we will meet our next patient, Brenda, and find out why she felt now was the perfect time to have a mini liquid facelift. Welcome back to The Younger You, everyone. Do you say these things to yourself when you're looking in the mirror? I'm getting wrinkles. I'm feeling a little blah, blah, blah. Well, cosmetic surgery can be expensive and it is permanent. Well, let's meet Brenda as she goes through the process of getting rid of those thoughts. Sometimes people come in when they're in their younger years of aging and they don't want to go to the operating room to do something dramatic. They, they want to do something less expensive, less invasive, and they still want a, a very quality result. And so there are a whole host of things that we can do that are less invasive that may still give us great results. I am here for a Cabela process that will strengthen and tighten up this little wiggly area underneath my neck, you know, that gives the appearance of being much older than I am. <laughs> I teach second grade. In my occupation, it requires a lot of energy and a lot of, you know, excitement because if I'm not excited, they're not going to be excited. And I need them to be excited. So um, I feel like I have that on the inside but I don't want to look that tired, worn out, you know, lacking energy. And there were times I'd look in the mirror and I'd think, well, you look tired, but I don't think I'm tired, you know? And I thought, oh, you know, that's not your best look. I want my outside to match my inside. I'm not going to look 21. I don't feel 21. I feel in my 30s. So, you know, um, that's what I'm hoping for, just the, uh, a refreshed, energized look. It was a little daunting, you know, the whole idea of coming to a plastic surgeon, I feel like is a, you know, kind of a Hollywood thing or a, a little bit more egotistical than I really wanted to portray. Um, but the truth of it is, you know, I do other things to make myself feel, you know, energized and my best self. Um, you know, whether it's get my hair colored or get my nails done or I exercise. I came to terms with that and the doctors here were so good when they, you know, talked to me and explained things and said, you know, in the past, a lot of people have that um, concept through 
those extreme shows where things haven't turned out so well. And I have to admit, those crossed my mind. Uh, but they, you know, they reassured me and they talked to me about, you know, the procedure I'm having done is very gradual. It's, it's not an extreme, you know, in some cases, I might be the only one who notices it. So when someone comes in for liposuction, they get a dramatic result right at the end. With Kybella, it is a softer, more gradual progression. That becomes safer because you're doing it in a more controlled and slow fashion. The beauty of that is that there's no going to the operating room, right? It's a quick procedure. It takes all of five or 10 minutes to do. Um, the patient goes right back to whatever they were doing right before their appointment. You want to approach the area in question in a regimented, sequential kind of fashion. You don't want to just think, oh, well, there's maybe a little bit here and maybe a little bit here. So we use a grid of little dots. I'm just, this is just a little grid and I'm gonna hold that up to your chin, mm -hmm. okay? And then I'm just gonna put a moistened four by four behind it. We're going to measure before we put that grid on where exactly that, that excess fat is. Some people tend to carry a little bit more weight in the middle portion of their neck than they do in the surrounding areas. But the grid just helps us to be able to, to see what's going on. All right, are you ready? When she's done with the numbing, we'll start with the injection on this one side. All right, here we go. The substance in question is actually something from the, the stomach juices that we use when we digest our food. So you inject this in very small amounts into the areas um, in question, usually around here by the, by the neck. And that takes just a little bit of that fat away at a time. So you're doing it in a controlled fashion so that you're not getting too much and you don't want it a lot over in one area and not so much in another. You want to do it in a nice even way so that that's going to give you a nice contour when everything is said and done. There are several things that people really like about Kybella. Number one, that there, there is no downtime, essentially, other than that little bit of bruising and swelling. They can go right back to their job. They can go right back basically after their appointment. They don't have to go home. There's no recovery time. There's no feeling drowsy from surgery. It's automatic in uh, the amount of time that it takes. All right. And guess what? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right, so let's put a little bit uh, more ice back on there maybe and let that sit there. You may have a couple little bruises right down there, but they're not bad. I am excited and nervous all at the same time. I want to live each day to the fullest and I want to look like I'm living each day to the fullest. After the break, everyone will have both patients and Dr. Nims on the couch to see the final results. Like us on Facebook and join in on the conversation. Welcome back to The Younger You, everyone. Well, of course, this is my favorite part of the show. We're gonna to get to see the before and after shots of both of our patients. Welcome to the show, ladies. We Hello. really appreciate the time that it's taken for you to go through the process. How do you both feel? I'm excited. Are you? Yes. Lynn, when you see your before and after photos, how do you feel now? Are you glad? Because you're feeling a little bit hesitant about having your eyes done. Yes, um, I'm glad I did it. I yeah. think uh, it's been a journey and I think you learn a lot about yourself too, going through something like this. I think so. Brenda, now. Yes, sir. We get, we'll have full disclosure. I know you socially and yes. privately as a friend of mine. And I phoned you and I said, I need you to go and see Dr. Jared Nims. I need a makeover. And I trusted you. <laughs> and I was a little intimidated. And I had to reconcile that it was okay to do something for me. Okay, that's interesting. Even though I had never done anything like this. Let's just check it out. 
Okay. I trust Troy. I'm going to give this a shot. Dr. Jarrett, I want to bring you in here for a moment. Mm -hmm. She was just saying, I've never considered something like this for myself. I don't really think about myself in that way. What do you say when there's you hear things like that? Yeah, there's an interesting dynamic between somebody, the way somebody feels about themselves and how they, how they look. And so often that's, that's a common thing that we hear. Now, you had surgery, total eye rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. Yours was non-surgical. Yes, okay? sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. You weren't ready to have the knife. No. <laughs> and, but they were great in explaining all the different options and letting me feel comfortable with the procedure yeah. that I was going to have. Okay, Lynn, what was your fear the day before or leading up to the actual surgery? I think uh, the biggest fear is, am I making the right choice and do I, you know, deserve to do this? Am I going to feel guilty? When you have the knife, it's permanent. Agree? Did those thoughts ever go through your mind? I've heard just wonderful things about the doctor and I didn't have any hesitation with that because he does have, he has a wonderful history. Yeah. I'm a nurse, so of course I know there are things that can happen and those go through your heads. Um, yeah. You work with it. That's interesting. I want to bring that back to you again, Dr. Jared. When we talk about non-surgical, what are the risks when we talk about non-surgical? Common things being common, swelling, bruising. Anytime you're doing an injection, you are, you are making a little hole. Yeah. So you can have bruising. Um, sometimes that's worse than others. Usually it's not that bad. Obviously, people who are taking aspirin or, or some kind of other medication may have oh. more trouble. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So would, it be, would <coughs> you be recommending in the consultation that you need to know what the patient, what prescriptions they're on? Correct. I didn't even think of that for non-surgical. Did you? Because it's on the form. It's very oh. thorough. There it is, everyone. <laughs> Alrighty, what were you nervous from? Because we sent you in first to have Kybella. Right. And you had a little bit of swelling, you said. I did. The first go around, there was a little swelling. There was a little bit of bruising. Uh, for me, I have this little um, aversion to needles. So um, I led with, I'm afraid to get a flu shot. And they were very patient, and they didn't make me feel silly. Um, and applying ice throughout the procedure, it was never anything more painful than when I'd had allergy testing. Okay. But I had to live into that. Right, I got you. There was a little trust that had to be established, and they were very calm and kind to me. Because I did just throw you in there. It, it I was. didn't give you much time to consider it. Which was a blessing in disguise. Because Lynn had weeks. <laughs> Lynn had weeks of time to think about yes. this. Yeah. We did pre-interviews. We mm -hmm. had a consultation. We had a lot more process with you, didn't we? And I also think that's the super important thing. We want everyone to know at home. When you are doing your research or considering a cosmetic procedure, you really do have to go into the websites, ask friends, have you been to this doctor? Who do you know? How do you feel about giving patients, other patients, phone numbers to ask them about how they went with a particular procedure? That's if it's okay with that yeah, other patient. Yeah, it's going to depend on whether that's okay with that patient. So yeah. if they're okay with that, then, and if they say, hey, look, I'd love to talk to people, then I'm fine with that. Yeah. Would that, does that make you feel like, you know, it would be an easier step for you if you felt that the doctor would be, be allowing that? I would if love to help somebody feel more comfortable. Yeah. For me at that time, I had a niece living with me who was a nurse, and I was talking to her in the day, you know, that I was going in and explaining to Jen I was a little nervous, and being the tech-savvy gal she is, she pulled up and she said, he has great reviews. You should feel very confident. That's all like, we like to hear, everyone. Great reviews. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate both Thank of you. you again. Dr. Jared Nims, you've done incredible work. Thank you. Thank you so much. As you can see, there are many different options for you to make your eyes look younger, both surgically, also non-surgically. For more information about the show, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Coming up next week on The Younger You, sometimes life throws physical and emotional curveballs, but Laurie isn't letting this stop her from living. She gets a total body makeover and she's one step closer to The Younger You.